Welcome to part 4 of our Italian adventures on Piano Azura, and today was day 5 and saw us dock in the exceptionally busy port of Civita Vecchia. We saw 6 ships at berth and the 2 further moored out to sea. It was going to be a long and busy day. We had wimped out on the idea of doing Rome under our own steam by taking the train from Civita Vecchia, and instead we booked a last minute piano excursion called Rome on your own. So we scoffed breakfast super fast and disembarked to get on board our coach. It was a pleasant 90 minute ride into the city of Rome. Our guide Angela distributed city maps and prepared us for what to expect. The coach dropped us immediately outside the amazing Colosseum. This really is a magnificent structure, but it was also a throng of tourists all doing gladiatorial combat to get that perfect selfie. So guys, here at long last, what's the plan? Well, we made it. We've actually got here to the Colosseum at last. Amazing, we've been trying to do this for a long time yeah. and uh, really pleased we've got here and the Colosseum looks spectacular, absolutely wow. wow. Um, we've got just under six hours here, about five and a half hours here and our first time in Rome, uh, lots to do, lots to see. So we're gonna try and do it on foot, although we might regret that in this heat. See how we I get think we're probably going to go out on foot and maybe come back on the metro, maybe. Yeah, we'll try the metro as a back stop. Or the bus. It's just got bus. Yeah. All right, see how we get on. Bye. Getting inside the Colosseum wasn't possible without booking in advance or paying extra for skip the line tickets, which was a real shame. Even the forum ruins are no longer free to get in with the game tickets needed for this. We had five and a half hours to explore the city and we decided that we needed to decide which attractions we would try and just fit in into the time that we had. Our first waypoint was the Pantheon and we chose to walk from the Colosseum into the city. This was a hot and sweaty half hour walk which took us past plentiful ruins and the impressive monument to Victor Emmanuel. We soon found ourselves navigating through the maze of Rome's pretty back streets all the way to the Piazza of St Ignatius with its picturesque church. Then it was a short walk down to one of the best preserved Roman buildings in the entire world, the impressive Pantheon. Originally a Roman temple, it has remained in ceremonial use throughout history and today is still a working Catholic church. Getting inside costs five euros and tickets can be bought online using ticket machines outside in the piazza or using cash at a ticket office. Tickets are timed however and it's best to be aware of that Having bought the tickets from the ticket machines, we entered and soaked up the atmosphere inside this magnificent building. The roof of the Pantheon is said to be the largest unsupported concrete roof in the entire world, and the oculus allows sunlight to pour in and illuminate the many sculptures and frescoes all around. This was some place. Having left in wonder, and with the heat building, it was definitely gelato time. We found a brilliant gelato shop in a nearby street. You had to buy a ticket first before presenting it to the counter and telling the assistant what gelatos you wanted in your cup or cone. So it's gelato time. What have you gone for, Nay? I've gone for a Bailey's ice cream and a lime one. How I've is just it? tried the Bailey's, absolutely delicious. Mm. The gelato was delicious but was melting so fast you had to eat it incredibly quick. Brain freeze time! Deciding that our next destination should be the Trevi Fountain, we set off across the city and we quickly realised how easy it is for time to slip by in Rome, as in every square or courtyard is a monument, obelisk or fountain. Some of the distractions we found included the 6th century obelisk situated in the middle of Piazza di Monte Tutorio. It is 22 metres in height and made of red granite. Dedicated to the sun god, the obelisk originally stood at Heliopolis before being moved to Rome during the reign of the Empire of Augustus, around 10 BC. We also saw the column of Marcus Aurelius located in Piazza Colonia, and this is a striking monument celebrating the emperor's military victories. Erected in the late 2nd century, it was originally topped with a statue of Marcus Aurelius, but now features a statue of St Paul. There's also lots of distractions to buy souvenirs too, but we finally found our way to the absolutely stunning Trevi Fountain, along with everyone else it seemed. This place was busy, and we mean really busy. It was impossible to get close and from where we could get to if we could throw three coins into the fountain we'd probably better try out for a professional baseball team. That said it was absolutely beautiful. So where next? Well it's amazing what you'll consider when you are desperate for the loo and this became our next quest. Rome has a distinct shortage of dustbins and public toilets. Not sure if the two are linked but the latter was becoming a challenge. Spying a McDonald's, we tried our luck, only to find you needed an access code that's printed on your receipt, or you could 
pay a euro. Noticing the menu boards, we decided to order a bit of lunch and use the code to access the loos. The Italian McDonald's was actually quite nice and we got chatting to a lovely couple who were randomly vlogging their foodie tour of Europe in McDonald's. With time passing by, we said goodbye and headed up to the Spanish Steps. Much less busy than the Trevi Fountain, but this was another beautiful spot and we soaked up the atmosphere and marvelled at the exquisite architecture that is so widely found around the city. And filling water bottles from the many fountains is encouraged in Rome and in this heat this was a real blessing. Time left was disappearing and just as we were deciding where next, Cy received a call from a care service for an elderly relative of his saying he'd activated his panic alarm. All other emergency contacts were not answering. So Sai obviously needed to stop and deal with this, contacting other family members who could help. Help was quickly organised, but this did take the wind out of our sails, so we found a bar and stopped to take in what had just happened and grab a much needed beer. We needed to make our way back to the Colosseum and found ourselves back in time to take in the impressive Constantine Arch, as well as parts of Palatine Hill, before heading back to get on the bus. Well that's been some adventure. It has, certainly. For a place. This definitely fulfilled expectations and obviously we very quickly realised that we just can't do it in a day. So much to see. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Rome is somewhere we will be coming back to. What a place. It's been hard. It's been 36 degrees today. Um, the guide says it's been the hottest um, week of the year. Um, and it's really, really hot. I'm really grateful for my fan. <laughs> Good value for money that was. Yeah. All right. Well, look, uh, I'm going to head back to ship now. Catch you later. Where had the time gone? We'd done a fraction of what we wanted to, but we'd seen enough to know that we'd like to come back, and we didn't need to be a crack shot at throwing coins at a fountain to work that out. Back on the bus, then back to the ship, and this had been a long and tiring day, with over 20,000 steps notched up in a 36 degree heat. Well, no wonder we made the mistake of resting our heads on the pillow soon after we got back to our cabin and waking up a couple of hours later, we grabbed an evening meal and enjoyed wines and cocktails in our favourite planet bar. Then time to turn in, with another early start awaiting for us in the morning, as we fulfil our lifelong ambitions to explore the wondrous ruins of Pompeii. See you in the next video! Don't forget to like and subscribe!